We are here. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Come on in and get comfy. I am so grateful to be back for another segment of the Business Bootcamp series presented by Discover Her Worldwide Incorporated and Comerica Bank. I'll start by acknowledging that COVID-19 affected communities across the globe. And after having to cancel several of our own annual signature events in 2019, we spoke with our friends at Comerica Bank to identify what our next steps to make an impact would be. In 2020, we decided to put together 12 business workshops on various topics that equipped entrepreneurs, small business owners, and nonprofit leaders in order to do our part for economic sustainability. You see, our goal continues to be to educate and equip business owners and leadership professionals with the strategies and resources that you can apply to your business immediately. Like we do not want you to wait to know what to do. And so it was really important for us to remain proactive in increasing access to tangible knowledge and helping leaders develop professional skills as we all figure out how to navigate this post-COVID world together. And so we are here again for season two, episode 11 of the Comerica Business Sense Bootcamp series. And for those of you who are new to me, hey, I am your host, A. Margot Blair. I'm a leadership development consultant at the intersection of faith and business. I am the founder of Discover Her Worldwide Incorporated, um, which is a 501c3 nonprofit organization headquartered in Phoenix, Arizona. And our vision here at Discover Her is designed to bridge generational gaps between diverse groups of women. And pre-Rona, we would do this through in-person, professional, and personal development experiences, similar to this, but they were conferences and trainings and seminars. And so as we figured out how to navigate this post-COVID world at Discover Her, we are cultivating virtual experiences to teach the fundamentals that may have been missed, to equip leaders with actionable steps that you can apply to your business and life immediately, as well as grow our professional networks. And I would be completely remiss if I didn't welcome and thank the company behind the yes of bringing this vision to life, Summer Fawcett, who is the National African-American Business Development Manager at Comerica Bank. Summer, it is so great to see you and have you a part of this vision. Thank you so much, Margo. You know, I absolutely love being here every time, every month. It's just a nice nugget to get. Um, and trust me, you guys, I learn things too. So you're not the only ones. I've been in banking for 17 plus years. I've been in finance for this long. And um, it's just so wonderful to find hosts and partners just like Margo and um, understanding that with the relationship, we build upon each other. So we're learning so many different new things, um, especially when these new times, I mean, yes, things were the same, you know, two years ago, but now anything goes really, it's just, <laughs> it's just different systems are changing, different processes are changing, different requirements and qualifications, everything's changing. So it's a new world for all of us. Um, and the best thing we can do right now is bond, bond together, figure out how to get through everything and kind of work it out. And I am so excited. And and honored to be a partner with Margot and discover her worldwide and, and being part of these conversations because they're so important for us to just listen and learn and kind of create. So speak up, ask questions because the best thing for you is to put this information out so that others can hear it. And then the people who can make changes can make those changes based on your reactions or what, what you're going through. Um, and, and with the bank, I, I report all this information to the, to the higher up. So when, you tell me something I don't just keep it to myself it is expounded upon and and explained and reporting you know all the all the fun stuff nobody likes but it's quantified <laughs> by by every 
timing that you're giving us so that we can can see how to build a better community within our bank. So thank you so much for being part of um, this this wonderful program, Margo. And thank you for spreading it across, not just Arizona now, we're, we're spreading it across the nation and the world. So i um, excited for this topic, this discussion. I'm going to sit back, listen, enjoy. I'm available for a conversation though and for questions. So thank you so much. Absolutely. And again, thank you, Comerica. And we are so grateful to have you a part of this vision. And in truth, you you are correct. The, you know, these boot camps are bigger than just hosting a workshop or hosting a training, right? We, again, are providing tangible information and resources to the entrepreneurial leader, the nonprofit founder. And we are connecting with other subject matter experts across the United States. And I'm really excited to introduce you to today's speaker, because again, it's another person who's not just local to Phoenix. Like we're not just doing this in the Valley. I'm bringing people within my network and I've had to tap my network to connect with other people to really bring um, dynamic conversations to this boot camp, and so I'm super excited. And so before we dive into today's segment, I always wanna start with some housekeeping because I see that we have some first first time boot campers uh, or boot camp attendees. And so we wanna say welcome and we wanna be sure to really set the stage so that you know what to expect during your time um, over the next hour, hour and a half. And so we wanna invite you to be an active participant in this discussion as Summer mentioned. And so what does that actually look like? Be sure that you have your notepad and pen at the ready. When you hear something that resonates or speaks with you, let us know in the comments. If you talk, we will talk back. We will acknowledge you and what you have shared. Um, if you would like to uh, like us to provide additional clarity or an example around something that we're discussing, let us know and just ask that. And it, we will do a final call for questions at the end. So be sure to drop them in the comments throughout the discussion. And then my team and I will do our best to get your questions answered. Um, each segment, we encourage you to share, as Summer said, because it is really important that we don't just keep this information to ourselves. So if there is a subject matter expert, if there's an entrepreneur, if there is a leadership this expert that you know who should be hearing this conversation around developing high performance habits, share, tag them, and bring them into this discussion um, as well. If you receive, when you receive any quotables or takeaways that you want to share, use the hashtag Comerica Business Sense Bootcamp Series. And that is inside of the comment section. And really what that allows us to do is to be able to go back and find your takeaways. And again, it's something that we report. It's something that we take note of to continue to bring these dynamic conversations to the table. And as a final point, we'd like to thank each of you for joining us because you really could have been anywhere else in the world, but you are here with us to learn, to grow, and to prepare to make a greater impact in the lives of those you are called to lead. Let's dive in. I think everybody is ready. So we are so excited for today's conversation. And the theme for this bootcamp series is developing high performance habits. And it really adds on to what we've been doing over this season or this series of the bootcamp. We've talked about mental health and entrepreneurship. We've talked about courageous conversations that convert, certifying your business, upscaling your marketing, the power of SEO, relationships with media, the community building blueprint. And so as we are landing the plane for this season, we wanted to focus on the person behind the business. And this is why today's discussion on developing high performance habits was key. And so today we are joined with Bill Goodwin. He is the owner of Priority Living of Minnesota, which is a leadership development company. Bill Goodwin has 30 years of leadership experience, so he is the best person to have this discussion with us. And in growing, his experiences in growing individuals and teams with proven leadership training, proactive coaching, and dynamic public speaking. He is a member, along as with me, uh, of the John Maxwell leadership team. He is a lead pastor of a growing church as well. He founded 
priority living of Minnesota to add value and build leaders in for-profit companies, nonprofit organizations, as well as churches. Bill, it is so great to have you with us today. Oh, hey, Margo, it is such an honor to uh, be with you and the audience there. I want to greet everyone that uh, is tuning in. I am here in my uh, in my condo here in Minnesota, and it's really a joy to be able to connect with folks in Arizona and all over uh, the country, maybe even the world. So thank you for having me today. I'm really honored to, to be your guest today. It's so great to have you. And again, today's conversation, Bill, is going to center on developing high performance habit. I know we briefly have the conversation of what that would look like. And so I want to really set the tone for our audience today. And so we will discuss how our habits are interfering with our productivity. We're going to be talking about the steps we can take to reprogram our habits and the style of support we need from our professional peers as we develop high performance habits in order to serve those we are called to lead. And so I think it's really important that we start off with some high level overview foundational questions. And then um, later in our discussion, dive deeper into the psychology and transformative impact of developing high performance habits, um, which can have on our businesses as well as our lives. How does that sound? That sounds excellent. Let's go for it. I'm ready. Awesome. Awesome. Okay. Well, I'll just start with this. Um, what exactly are high performance habits? How would you describe that for people that this is an unfamiliar or a new concept? What exactly are high performance habits? Well, I think um, I, I like the, the term high performance habits. I think it, uh, it, it excites me personally. Uh, those that are driven type A type personalities, it might be a little overwhelming if, if your personality, we all have different personalities. It might be a little, little, little bit overwhelming where, where someone might say, well, I don't know if I'm that kind of person, mm -hmm. but I simply would say that high performance habits are simply uh, daily routines, daily practices uh, that we put in our lives, no matter what our personality type is, that get us from where we are to where we want to go. So um, I, I heard Dave Ramsey once say, um, there are no overnight successes. Uh, most people work 20 plus years to become an overnight success. Yes. And, and, in other words, what we do daily um, determines the direction of our life. Mm. And uh, our, our mentor, I know we're part of the John Maxwell mm -hmm. team, and I may be quoting quite a bit of Papa John oh, because uh, he's got such great, he's the number one expert in the world. So we, we should glean from him. Yes. But uh, John talks about how if he were to spend 24 hours with a person and watch your habits, watch how you get up in the morning, what you do in the morning daily, what you, what you do throughout the day, what you do when you, when you end the day, um, he can determine the direction of your life. And that just comes back to habits. It, it, that might, that's not a judgmental statement. That's not a, something to make someone offended. It just simply says, if we want to go from here to there, if we want to accomplish something beyond just letting life come at us, if we want to actually take the, the, the steering wheel, if you will, of our lives uh, and our business, then we have, to, we have to put in place our priorities. That's why I named my company Priority Living. We, we have to make priorities a priority and not just be things we think about and say, yeah, someday I'd like to. Actually, we need to come back and say, what are the habits that I do daily that will get me from here to there? So that's how I would define high performance habits. It's really daily activities we do to get from here to there. And I love that. And I love that you mentioned we have to make priorities a priority. It's so key because again, when we're on this journey, we're trying to we're all trying to figure it out. That's that's mm -hmm. the truth, regardless of how far along we are in our journey. And, you know, we can really take this even to a uh, it, we have it in the faith in the faith conversation, regardless of where you are on, on your spiritual walk, on your faith walk. There is all there is always more learning and growing to do. And so in the business world, there is always still more learning and growing to do. And most recently, I've been having this conversation of the 
okay. Giving yourself permission to change your mind because your priorities have changed or your vision has evolved or your life has changed. And so I believe this is really good as we're re- opening up this conversation around per- the making the priorities and just the habits that you begin to do daily. Yes. In the uh, best-selling book by John Maxwell, The 15 Invaluable Laws of Growth. Law number one of the 15 laws is the law of intentionality. That we, we grow older automatically. We can't stop the yes. aging process, yes. much as we would like to. Um, but we don't grow better uh, it, uh, um, uh, without intentionality to putting things in place in our life, to saying, I'm going to put steps in place. We'll get probably into some of those details of what those yeah. might be different for each person, but, but somewhat the same. And um, if, if we don't apply the law of intentionality, when it comes to uh, uh, high performance habits, we, we end up just taking life as it comes, as I said, yeah. and uh, rather than being intentional about moving our life in a direction, moving our business in a direction that we long for it to go. And again, this is this is really key. And so it really leads into the next question. Why is it important to develop high performance habits? Yeah, that's a, that's really I, I always come back to the why behind the what. Yes. Um, when we have an understanding of why uh, I get up early, why I uh, exercise on a regular basis, why I read leadership books, why I am intentional about connecting with people and so on and so forth. If we understand why it makes it a whole lot more enjoyable doing the what. So um, that's a great question, Amargo. I would say that, um, you know, it it just goes back to, it's important to uh, set the course for our life, set the course for our life. Matter of fact, I want to just take a moment. This fits right in with this question. Um, here's a John Maxwell book, make today count. Does that not sound like developing high performance habits right there? That's I can't it. read you the whole book right now, but I'll, I, I do have uh, do some, I do have something in here. I want to share Please. this is just excellent. It goes right in here, making our lives a masterpiece. This is why, this is why habits, daily habits are important because you are a masterpiece in the making. Mm. Um, you, you can make every day of your life a masterpiece. Isn't that idea appealing? The question is how, uh, how and what does it take? Um, there are two sides to the same coin to become a masterpiece. It's our decisions and our discipline. Oh, come on now. Wow. And they are our disciplines and our decisions. Two sides of the same coin. You could call them goal setting and goal getting. Um, they can't be separated because one is worthless without the other. And then I just want to read this other part right here. It says time is an equal employer, but how you treat time is not equal. Time is like a block of marble. Give a block of marble to the average person and you will end up with a block of marble. Give that block of marble to a master sculptor and watch what happens. The sculptor will look at it. With the artist's eye, first make decisions about what it can be. Then they practice the discipline of their craft and they transform this lifeless stone into a masterpiece. I believe you and I can become like a sculptor. We can learn to become master craftsmen, not uh, not of stone, but of our lives. And that's the why behind the what. We're going somewhere. We don't want to just be the same tomorrow or in five years or 10 years, we want to move from where we are to where we want to be. And that takes daily habits to get there. You, you know, you said some really key things here. And, and, and as I'm feeling like I'm trying, I'm just, I want to be present during these conversations as much as I can, right? As the host, it's like, okay, I got to ask the next question. But I really resonate with this because again, this is my lane as I've been studying the psychology behind leadership, excuse me, for the last decade. And so for me, Bless it you. is really important for us to unpack what you're saying here, right? Because I'm an avid believer that we have all been called for a, a specific purpose, right? We have specific assignments in our lives. And sometimes it gets convoluted with the online business world. 
right? And so we are, we end, we find ourselves, or some people find themselves comparing their step one, two, five to somebody else's step 10. Mm, come on. And yep. this is why what I'm hearing you say, I wrote three things down, but they kind of come together. You said decisions and discipline. Yes. I want to unpack that. You mm-hmm. said goal setting and goal achievement. Go getting. Yep. Go getting. And, and goal achievement is how I, how I coined it. Goal setting and goal getting. Yes. And then you said, and one thing that came to mind as, as we were hearing this is time management versus priority management. And so I want us to just take a little bit of time here. Let's talk about our decisions and, and discipline and what role they play in developing habits. We're going to get to the high performance piece, but I want us to talk about just let's go just fundamentally what about our decisions and and what what is this discipline? How does it play a role? Why is it important? Yeah, I'll I'll speak to my life. You know, I I've been uh, driven, going. You know, I felt like in a direction for many years, for most of my life. But when I realize that I'm actually preparing for something, I, I may not know what I'm preparing for, but I'm preparing for something. If you this last summer we had the Summer Olympics, those athletes were preparing for something they didn't just show up on the olympic stage in the stadium or the swimming pool or wherever they were preparing for something friend you and i and our businesses are preparing for something now we may not know what we're preparing for just yet but if we don't start getting prepared we may not like where we end up we may not like when the struggle comes in our business or in our personal life or or, uh, or we go through difficulty, maybe we're not prepared yet. So we, we always need to be ready by doing daily habits that prepare us for something. Maybe that's a goal that we know what it is, and maybe it's something that we're just not sure of yet. I love this phrase, your now is preparing you for your next. Your now is preparing you for that's your good. next. It, 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 what, what, what I've been going through now, in fact, what I've been doing for 30 years in in, in the nonprofit world, in the church world, uh, has been preparing me for what I'm just moving into with priority living. Right. You see, our now always leads us to our next. But friend, you may not know what your next is. Mm. You get prepared in the daily habits that we do now, wherever we are now. And you will be prepared for whatever the good things that are in store for you next, because you prepared along the journey. You don't just arrive there, you prepare to get there. That's so good. That is so good. And again, it, you know, as we're, as we're having this discussion, ex- that, that leads into the goal setting. And um, in, my, in, in my new book, Profitable Founder, I ended up writing uh, about one of my clients. She gave me permission, so I didn't just expose her. But when she came to me, she didn't know how to s- achieve the goal she set for herself. Mm-hmm. And then when I started polling um, my other clients and I even started looking at my experiences, I realized that there is a lot of talk around goal setting, but a lot of those goals, when they when we begin to see the examples or hear the examples, it's, okay, well, you need to set goal businesses for goals for your business and life. And then the examples that they pull out, connecting it to smart goals, they end up saying, and so for example, let's say you want to lose 15 pounds. You have to, and, and, and I always came to a stop when, when this would happen because I'm like, wait a minute, you're telling me to set a business goal. What does that have to do with me losing weight? I need it to be tangible. I need you to help me to, to formulate a goal for my business. What does that mean? And so as I was walking them through this process, it was really understanding a few things. And yes, we're going to go here because we do have three pastors on the line. Mm -hmm. For us, it comes to God-inspired goals. We call it GI goals. Understanding that your purpose is so much greater than you you have to start there. And when you start at that point, that's when we can reverse engineer the process, reverse engineering the goal setting process. And that's why I wrote, um, you, you mentioned goal, um, goal getting. getting. Goal and setting and goal getting. Goal get, setting and goal getting. 
For us, it's goal setting and goal achievement. Yeah. What is the goal that you want to set for yourself? But what are the steps required of you? What habits do you need to develop mm. to actually achieve the goal? Yeah, I, I, I want to speak Please, to that. Jump in, jump in. That. That, is, that is really good. So let me give you this quote. Theodore uh, Hesburgh, I, I put it up here so I could share it with us today. Uh, he was the former president of Notre Dame. And he said these words. He said, you don't make decisions because they are easy. You don't make decisions because they are cheap. You don't make decisions because they are popular. You make decisions because they're right. So, so we, we move forward in life. Um, I, I just, you know, just continue learning from others. John Maxwell says, you don't go to the top, you grow to the top. Mm. So that's why our now leads us to our next. You see, we could even have a goal that we want to achieve, but the goal isn't the end goal. The goal is, what am I, what's going to happen in me? What are the changes in me that I'm going to grow as I'm reaching that goal? And, uh, and so, so that's often what it takes. It often takes us to get from our, our, our now leads us to our next, often is because of the changes that happen in us that makes us prepared and equipped and, 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 and ready and steady to do the next thing. So let me, let me just talk about the, the, this, give an illustration. Here's an illustration. Let, let's say that in your backyard, you want to cut down a particular tree. So you go out in that backyard, you pick up an ax and you swing the ax five times, just five times, not a bunch of times and you get all sweaty and, and overworked and worn out. So you don't want to work on it anymore. You just go out there one day and you swing the ax five times You put the ax down, you go back in the house and the next day you get up and you say that tree needs to come down. I'm going to go out there, pick up the ax again, swing it five times, just, just five times you swing that ax. Well, you go back inside. And if you do that daily, that's the key word daily, you do it daily, just five times. You, we can manage five times swinging the ax at that tree, just five times. If we do that, we go back in, not a trick question, doesn't matter the size of the tree, what will eventually happen with the tree? It's gonna come down. It's coming down. Yeah. So let's say that that tree is our goal. Wow. It's the direction we wanna go in our life. If we attack that goal just a little bit every day. See, this is the problem for me when I started working out Many times I've been consistently <laughs> working out now for a while, but, but before I got there, I would start working out and I want to get big and strong. So what do I do? I don't swing the ax five times. I pump way too much weight, yep. weight and then I'm so sore. It's I, can't not working. I can't get out of bed. I, I, I can't move. And I think, ah, I can't work out anymore. It just hurts too much. Wow. Well, so when I started back to be consistent in working out, I did less and you work out less, you work yourself up. So this whole thing about goal setting, this whole thing about daily habits is this illustration of taking down this tree in our backyard, just swinging the ax five times. So let me just give you a quick things of what we learned from this little illustration that applies to our life and these high performance habits. Yeah, I think high performance habits, I love the title, but what it sounds to me is like, I gotta do all this big stuff. And really what I need to do is a few things consistently every day. So. Um, first of all, we need to know what we want to accomplish. Mm. If we know what we want to accomplish, in this case, it's take down a tree in the backyard, uh, then, then we have a clearly defined goal, a clearly defined direction for our business or for our life. Number two, we have to have the right tools. So I didn't say you go grab a baseball bat or go grab a shovel. Uh, I guess I've shared this before and a guy said, why would I use an ax if I could just go get a chainsaw? I said, because, because we're learning how to develop habits here. So you take the, you take the <laughs> right tool, which is, which is the ax, right? Yes. And you accomplish the goal. You need the right tool. Number three, you need to take action. This is the difference for many of us mm. is that we lack action. We, we think about what we want to accomplish. And that's why daily doing something a little bit is better than doing a lot and then stopping doing it. So we have to take action. In this case, it's swing five times. I don't know what it is for you and your business. It might be, I have to make a list and call five potential clients. I have to, I have to, uh, I have to follow up on this paperwork that's been building up on my desk or, or whatever it might be. I have to start returning those emails that are building up. I don't know what it is, but we just do those things that can move us. We have to take action 
Action is always required to accomplish anything, to accomplish our goal. Number yeah. four, we have to stay focused. I don't know about you, but I can get distracted easy. It's the squirrel complex. Squirrel. Oh, yep, another another a good idea over here. It would be like saying, I want to take down this tree and I swing five times and I do that a couple of days. And then all of a sudden I go out in my backyard and I go, wait a minute, I got another tree over here. I want to, I want this tree to come down too. So I'll start swinging at that tree, mm. and then that tree, and then that tree. It's like, no, we must stay focused on what it is we want to accomplish in order to do it. I've heard the phrase, the person who chases two rabbits catches neither of them. Yep. So we have to we have to be focused on our goal. And then the last thing, and then I'll I'll go back to you here, Amargo, is we need to be consistent. That's that's the key. That's the key to these habits. Why these habits are important? Because when we are consistent, consistency compounds. When I work out over and over, and I don't see results the first day, the first week, but when I keep working out, or in our spiritual life, we might yep. sign up for a Bible study or something. We have to stay consistent in our business life. We have to be consistent in, 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 in our approach. And uh, because that consistency compounds, you know, consistency is not a sexy word, but it's what gets the job done. It's what takes us from here to there. It's being consistent. And if we do five simple things every day, that's called a habit. We do whatever it is, it's going to get us. Uh, and accomplishing our goals. And, and, and we're going to see results because we took action. Again, this is so, so good. And I love, I love the analogy, right? Because again, it slows us down and it lets us pro I start talking slower as I'm saying this, right? It mm -hmm. slows us down and it lets us break this grandiose vision into bite-sized digestible pieces, right? I spoke a little bit earlier about, you know, us being at step one or step five and comparing ourselves to somebody else's step 10. Um, I recently heard a message and it was talking about, you know, the overnight success. And, and the way it was being explained was um, the old school photo process. Like you take it, you have to remove the film, you have to lay it in the, you know, go into the red room and you have to do this process. You put it in this bucket and then it sits there for X amount of yep, time. I remember doing and that. You put it, yep. And then you put it in this bucket, I remember that. Shake it off and then you hang it up and you have to let it sit. You have to let the process take its course. And so one of the things that I've started to really practice over the last year was making sure for me that I wasn't outpacing God, that I wasn't outpacing the season in which I was in as a business leader. Because for again, for me, I'm approaching 10 years in business. And I'm like, okay, I should be here. And I thought I should have already had this. And here's my goal. And why is this person there, you know, three months in and they've already surpassed X, Y, Z. And exactly the point to which you're referring in this example of five swings a day, come back tomorrow, five swings a day. And I'm going to make this super practical. I have in my phone, alarms for my schedule, 4.30, wake up, devotional until seven, blah, blah, blah. and I have this schedule and my alarm goes off at three o'clock to be off work. This is the schedule that I had to change for my lifestyle. And here's why. My first several years in, along my entrepreneurial journey, it was just me. When I say just me, I was single and I could do what I wanted to, when I wanted to, I didn't have to report to anybody. I didn't have to feed anybody. I didn't have to cook any meals. <laughs> It was just me. But when I became a wife, when I became a bonus mom, when I became a mama, all of those things changed. Yes. And so the, 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 the interesting thing is the week I had my child, I, tr I was planning a, 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 what was it? A five-day workshop. I had oh everything goodness. scheduled. I planned a five-day workshop the day I had my child. And I realized then that that's when I needed to take maternity leave. And 
I was wrestling with this because I felt that I had to, I had this cape on. I felt that I had to be the superwoman. I had to figure it all out. I had to be the wife. I had to be the mama. I had to be this amazing, profitable business owner to really fulfill my purpose in life. And over the last almost two years now, I have had so much peace working three to four days a week, being the most profitable in my business than I think I've ever been when I was working every single day, tirelessly, burnt, almost burnt out. And I share that for, because, again, we're talking about high performance. We're talking to the recovering workaholics. We're talking to the overcoming perfectionist. That's who we're talking to today. And I know I can resonate really well because, again, I was that 19-year-old summa cum laude. I was the 21-year-old master student. I was the one going further the fastest. And, and, and I think these type of conversations for business owners, for nonprofit leaders, bring us back to reality. Yes. They bring us out of the work. They bring us out of focus, you know, having this founder and business owner hat on and they have us sit back and really do some introspective work to say, I missed them and it's okay. This is what it looks like to give myself grace, to extend myself grace and really understand that I am more than my business. Yes, that's right. And I think, thank you for sharing that part of your journey. It's, um, it's wonderful when we are driven, when we are purposeful, when we are intentional, all of those right. things. But always to, to, to keep in mind seasons that we're in in life. Mm. And um, sometimes we feel like we have to get it all now. And um, I love the, the, the powerful story, which we should probably reread often, um, children's book, The Tortoise and the Hare. Hmm. The, the Tortoise and the Hare, I, I, I've read it several times. I want you to know, just spoiler alert, <laughs> the tortoise wins every time. The tortoise wins every time. Again, it's the five things that don't take you out, that don't overwhelm you. It's, it's doing the consistent things. It's developing the habits of, of, uh, of, of your spiritual life, of prayer and and scripture reading, if you're a person of faith, that in Christian faith like I am, it, 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 it's the things that are uh, intentional about growing yourself. So that's why I read books. I read a lot of books. Um, that's why I listen to podcasts while I'm driving and when I'm working out, because I want to continually be growing myself so that my now can lead to my next and recognizing that consistency compounds. So do what you can do now but don't feel like you have to achieve it all now whatever stage of life you're in know that in due time you will reap you will reap what you've sown if you've sown those things That's right. and um it, it, what what good does it gain someone in their 20s or 30s to work themselves to the bone to where they burn themselves out and they lose things in their life that they the relationships and health and whatever else because yeah. they thought they had to have it now yep. rather than I'm going to be consistent because I know consistency compounds and that then when I get into my 40s or my 50s or even my 60s, some of the most successful people, this is, this is I don't have the, the exact article to tell you, but I've read the most successful people in life are in their 60s. In their, you, when you're in your 30s, you think in my 60s, no way, <laughs> that's so far away. Well, I'm in my, I'm 50 now, so I'm, I'm getting closer. You're close, but, you're, but, you're, you're right around the corner. I see the difference. I see the trajectory of life that we can, we can just be consistent and develop those daily habits that, that don't burn you out and wear you out, but that energize you and, and, and you will benefit from them and you will see results over time. Again, this is this is so important. And I want to loop this conversation. I want to I want to throw Ali to summer because, you know, when we're talking about I've, I've heard the saying like the corporate fast track. Yeah. 
And I've heard where people try and rush to become the C-suite executive rather than taking their time to grow, learn, be mentored, be sponsored by seasoned corporate executives. So I would love for you to even add in your insight to this conversation and what we're talking about here of, of trusting the process um, and really not trying to outpace the season in which you're in. I'd love to hear your, your thoughts on this too, Summer. Yeah, you guys have made a lot of great um, statements. And it's interesting how everything kind of intertwines with life itself. So corporate is is no secret. It's, it's similar to what you do in life, what you do in yeah. business, what you do in faith and spiritual um, awareness. And it's really those things where there are seasons where you are going nonstop. And corporate world is really really good at putting you through those seasons. <laughs> so, I'll give you an example. So in quarter, there, we have different quarters. In quarters of the year, we know which quarters we get to relax a little bit, get to make sure we take our PTO, our paid time off. We, we know when those seasons are. And then we know what seasons are where we're just like, do not go anywhere. You're going to be stuck and glued to your computer or you're going to be nonstop traveling. Like we are going to require like 60 hours of your, you know, every single week opposed to the normal 40 um, or maybe 35 during those off seasons. So the corporate's really good at letting you know, kind of getting you set. So we're all like slammed. We are working from like 7 a.m. to 10 p.m. almost every, every day, every other day right now, just so we can prep to relax at the end of the year. So we're doing all of our end of the year stuff, all the, the trainings, the compliance, the, the finding, funding events, um, funding for bi businesses and budgets. Everything needs to be completed by end of next or so by the beginning of the next week. So we're, no, we're slammed up until Thanksgiving. And then once Thanksgiving hits, we're just like, oh, we're going to coast. We're, we're going to coast until second week of January or something like that. And then we're waiting for that. So and if you think about that and kind of in life, like you work, you work, you work. And then so you know what you're going to get after that work. So you know that there might be some self-care that's needed. You know there might be some working out or some yoga or like stress relief that you're needing to do. But in that season of work, and I'm currently in that season of work, not just for corporate, but also for my business um, and also for my household. So there's a lot of things that kind of go into into those seasons, this time and space. And even though corporate world doesn't say, oh, you know, it's, it's part of the patterns, God, part of what God has for you. We all know that this is just part of the role. As, as a corporate person and a lot of corporate people that are, are even higher up, we, we all have businesses. We're not just in corporate. Yes. That's not, it's just like shocker. We, we have other businesses as well because we've learned now we didn't all have businesses at 20 or 25, <laughs> but we had businesses where I'm 40 now and I have a business. I had a business before it fell, which is fantastic because I learned from it, but we all have the capacity now to have 20 years in the business and say, oh, you know what? I think it's a good time to try something new, try something else out. And, and we have to know the time, again, times and seasons of when it's appropriate. And right now, yes, I'm working nonstop at work. I'm working nonstop. With, actually, I'm in the, in the space of my business right now, <laughs> waiting for a delivery from UPS. <laughs> yep, see? So that I can get it. We got to do a bunch of things just to make things happen. I mean, yes. it's just part of part of life and and the peace and joy that Marley you're speaking about that you had from from what what you have now compared yes. to what you're doing with your single <laughs> and zero responsibility and trust you me I I thought that was fantastic until I'm just like oh but the kids bring you joy like oh you need kids they're stressing the mess out of you you're like shaking half the time yep. <laughs> but they still bring you peace and joy in comparison to, to what without it so I, I say to people, trust the process, yeah. understand if you feel that, that it, and I put it to people like this, if it's something that you don't want to do, mm. that typically means you need to do it, right? If it's something that you're like, oh, I can handle that. That means it might not be for you. In order to grow, you have to be uncomfortable with that piece. So just, just move through it, do it. And even if it's something like, oh, I don't really want to do it. It's probably something that's going to help you grow because you personally, you physically will never, ever want to do something that's out of your wheelhouse, out of your box. But if you get out of your box and go through that season and time and space, wow. you'll be able to accomplish it. And then 
you, the next space that you have, you'll be able to relax and then you move again. It's just that growing and stepping and moving. So that yeah, that, so thank you. For good me. summer. I, I, that just reminds me of the process that I often try to work myself and tell others. And it's, it's we learn a little bit and we grow a li- and we do a little bit. We learn a little bit and we do a little bit. And, um, you know, be, being out of our comfort zone is never comfortable. That's why it's called our comfort zone. So I, I love what you just shared there, Summer. That is just uh, really helpful and insightful and, a, and even a good reminder to us. Thank you. Absolutely. And I think this is where, you know, there's there's aspects of our lives that, of course, we keep private as business leaders, but then there's also things that we share. And and I'll, I, I want to make this, again, real tangible. Um, this season is my second attempt at becoming Dr. A. Margot. And, and I say second attempt because the first time I crashed and burned. But here's the thing. I was on this journey the first time when I was 24, 25 in my doctoral program. And here's why. I went through it so quickly through my bachelor's and master's and I did really well, it was honestly effortless for me. And my surroundings were telling me, oh, you're gonna be a doctor by the time you're 25. Okay, great, let me try. And I delved straight into Mm. that. I didn't ask my source. I didn't like, I didn't discern whether that was what I was supposed to do in that season. And then in 2017, I was in a hit and run car accident. Mm. And that was the gear that shifted everything for me because this is personal, but I did not go and get the support or the therapy that I needed in that season. Why? because I had to go to church at the church. I had a workshop after the workshop. I had to go to third shift at a sober living facility where I was the manager on the Monday. I had to work a double on Tuesday. I had to work another double on Wednesday. I had to go to my doctoral class on Thursday. I had to work a double on on Friday. I had to fly out of town to go to a three day speaking engagement. And I went back to the regular rhythm of life after being in a traumatic experience. Mm -hmm. And I'm making this so real because, again, these are parts of of my story. I don't even think I've really ever shared that story um, with anybody because I didn't know how or when or, you know, how it was appropriate because I had to get to work. Um, And I realized on the other side of of finding peace, of healing, of realizing um, what was happening in that season that's when I started procrastinating. That's when I started having some memory loss, memory lapses. Like even to this day, I still don't fully remember 2017 unless I see pictures. Like I did, I, and, and it, it was, it was kind of scary for me realizing that I was grinding and that's what it is. Like, think about that, right? Like, let's go visual. That was, that's what I was doing. I was grinding on this mission to get to this destination that I was, I'm already predestined for. And, and that was where I, it, it, again, on the other side, I started realizing like, this is a marathon. Mm-hmm. This is a marathon and I have to be okay with the seasons I'm growing through. And again, I love that we're all in, in, in different spaces, all entrepreneurs, but we all have different experiences. And I'm, I'm still grateful that, that I haven't even hit my thirties yet. And I'm still learning these really transformative lessons now that in 20 years, in 30 years, how I'm going to be able to learn, use these stories to pour into the people that I'm leading at that stage of my life. And again, you know, part of why I I, I wanted to have this conversation, I'll be 100% honest, it was for me. Mm -hmm. I was 100% selfish and intentional about having this discussion, but I didn't know we were going to, this isn't scripted. I didn't know we were going to have this conversation. I didn't know we were going to go here in Mm -hmm. our topic. I definitely didn't know I was gonna share what I'm sharing today. But at the same time, it is freeing for us. Yeah. And I will repeat that we are able to get grounded once again, understanding that where we are in this season, we have to really understand what that means. But if we are supposed to be moving into our next, we have to be obedient. Because even when we delay, I was sharing this with uh, uh, my community yesterday, when we delay obedience, that's still disobedience. 
right? And so we have to really take that inventory. And I want to circle back to one of the lessons um, from your analogy, um, Bill, and you mentioned staying focused. That was your number four, number four or five, staying focused. And I've been, I've had this in my pocket for about two years now. Focus means follow one course until successful. Good. Follow one course until successful. And so I want to make this again, super tangible for the entrepreneurs. If you have not yet hit six figures in your business, let's make it really plain. If you have not hit six figures in your business and you have more than one offer that is not making six figures, scale back. Focus on that one core offer. Vet it, conduct thorough market research and continue to refine that one thing. And as you grow, as you develop, that's when you can begin to add other components of your business, continue to evolve that one core offer and even bring in other people as you're building up your systems. We talked about that with Lene Javette a few months back. As you're developing your business, automating your business. So you as the CEO, the appointed CEO can then step back and allow other people to begin to manage those positions. Mm. This is so important as we're having this discussion on high performance habits, that it's more than just being the top performer or making the next hit six or seven figure business. Bill, I I, I think you wanted to chime in. I'll, well, I'll, I just I'll, wanted I'll, to say, I, I want to say something about what you just said, and I just want to yeah. go back to you sharing about your journey and your, yeah, please. you know, the accident and all that 2017, yeah. you know, you know, the truth for all of us is a bend in the road is not the end of the road unless we fail to make the turn. So, wow. so delays are not denials. Yeah. Um, sometimes we, sometimes we have to wait again. It's because there's more things that need to happen in us mm. to get to where we're going. And um, if that weren't the case, we could just, you know, we could just, all start a company or be in a corporate world or a nonprofit and, and just arrive at our, and we won't have any, any challenges, any, any goals, any dreams that we just arrived, but rather it's always a process. We always yeah. just follow the process, but I love that phrase that, um, that, uh, you know, when, when we go through life and we even have setbacks, um, that can be, that actually can become our setups. Uh, that end up, you know, t- t- turning, you know, obstacles into opportunities. We grow in those times, yes, and we get new perspective in those times. And uh, and ultimately, uh, I just want to say in advance, congratulations on your doctorate, because you will achieve it. Mm-hmm. It is it, it is within reach. Yes, uh, you're on your way. And and the day that you receive the doctorate, I know you're going to celebrate, and you should. But really, the day you should have celebrate we all should celebrate is when we say yes to start something new. That's it. That's the day we should celebrate when we decided to take the new job, when we decided to take the promotion, when we said yes to going back to school, when we said yes to starting a business, that's really the day we should celebrate. Absolutely. Um, We often wait till the back end and we say, Oh, I've accomplished all this. Now let's celebrate. It's like, well, how about we celebrate when we say yes to something new um, because that's the beginning of putting habits and, and things in place that will get us from, from here to there. So a curve in the road is not the end of the road unless we fail to make the turn. And uh, so we just keep at it. We just keep at it. So just wanted to add that. Oh, I'll, I'll add this other thing. You know, it, it, it is our desire, should be our desire, ultimately to add value to people yeah. every day. That uh, all of us on the call, we are people of value, yep. who value people and who add value to people. And if we if we live with that, we can then receive uh, what uh, the fulfillment of what Zig Ziglar said. Uh, Zig Ziglar said, if you help people get what they want, they eventually will help you get what you want. So mm-hmm. um, I, I pray, uh, hey Margo, that as you as you continue in your business and in your nonprofit world and you're helping other people, I believe that other people are going to come alongside you and help you get uh, what you want, that doctorate. And now you're going to cross the finish line with a community of people that helped you get there, that supported you, that that were walking with you at the finish line 
of that doctorate program. And not just when you were 25 and you would have done it all on your own. Right. Uh, but you're like, okay, now who am I going to celebrate with? Look what I accomplished. <laughs> Instead, we need to do it in community. And so we, we are people of value who add value to people because we value people. Um, and that's also part of the high performance uh, habits that we have. It's not just focused on ourselves. Yes, we do need to grow ourselves, but we also need to be focused on the people around us because those are the people that help hmm. us in our daily habits to become what we are, are we destined to become. Again, so, so good. And first of all, thank you. Yes, I do have an amazing support system and even a, my professional network. Um, they are super supportive and really encouraging me along the journey. And, and, and that's my, my desire for other people. And, you know, I'll, I'll briefly make this point of, of when I realized that I had this gift, I'm going to call it a gift of, of partnerships. I didn't know that. I didn't, I, I didn't even know it was a thing. I didn't know that that was a skill. I didn't know that it was a challenge for other people. I know very early on, I think this was even starting out back in 2013, I just started sharing the vision with other people. I said, hey, you know, one day I see myself on stages, just pouring into tens of thousands of women, helping them, leading them, guiding them to overcome adverse life experiences. And this is what that looks like. And I just really started painting the vision. And, and I want, this is what I want you to take away from this. When I started sharing the vision with other people, it wasn't just me asking, hey, Summer, do you have X, Y, Z? Mm -hmm. And getting a yes or a no, I was painting the vision that, that, that I had and I hadn't yet arrived. And I knew it wasn't going to be even with that one, yes or no, or next opportunity. It wasn't necessarily that, but I knew I was committed for the long haul. And I think that's really what made a significant difference um, along my own journey was understanding that. I wanted to invite people for as long as they were supposed to be a connected to the season. Let's talk about that too, right? Um, because not everybody is going to go the full term with you. No, some people are in our life for a reason. Some and are in our life for a season and some yes. are for a lifetime, right? And same for us. We're in other people's lives. Sometimes it's for a reason. It's, it's, to, it's, to, it's to add value to them, encouragement, support in a particular reason or season of their life. And maybe it's for a lifetime too. That's right. And that is exactly it. And when I started realizing that, um, and again, this is a, a shift within even the last year for, for me, I said, you know, I started building this business around partnerships. All of that was great. And after writing the book, it was loud and clear. It's time to shift. And I was like, but wait, I've already built mm -hmm. this. And it was time to, it was time to go. And again, I was resisting moving into the next season. Why? Because I got comfortable. Mm -hmm. Because I got comfortable. And so this is, I feel like a really perfect segue um, to talk about what steps can we take to reprogram our habits? And before you answer that, I want to just like, like, you know, drive the point home in what I shared. You know, I had it built this business. I've been on the journey for X amount of time. And, you know, I was here in the personal development space, got into the leadership development space. And on the other side, I am being called into a season that is unfamiliar territory to me because I have grown so much mm -hmm. and I know several people who are listening to what we're talking about today. They understand the shift is upon them, that the shift has arrived and they're being called in a new season, maybe even a called into a different direction. And there is this, what I'm sensing is that there is this hesitation of, it being unfamiliar, not knowing what's on the other side of success, where people talk about fear of failure, but they don't talk much about the fear of success, mm -hmm. right? Again, not knowing what's on the other side. And so as we're growing and moving into this next season, 
Bill, Summer, feel free to chime in as well. But what steps can we take to reprogram our habits to really be prepared for the seasons we're moving into? Go ahead, Summer. Love to hear from you. Absolutely. Um, yeah, having a fear of success is harder to say than what actually is there because more most people have a slight fear of success and it's what are they going to you know what's my close circle of friends going to think of me will I outgrow someone will they be jealous of my success but the, the, what we do and this is just personal with my close circle I want to call them friends but honestly it's all family um we meet every week every single week we break bread we have a meal every single week and we talk about our successes. We, we celebrate our mm -hmm. successes. And you have to do it in a safe space so the people who trust, who you trust, who will celebrate with you and not have judgment. And we say not have judgment, but honestly, I judge my brothers all the time. So we have judgment and we're gonna tell it like it is. And yeah. we're gonna tell them, oh, you're doing well. Or we think, you know, you could probably be better. You probably should have said that. So a lot of, okay, here's another part. A lot of people think that your circle of friends, your your people that, you know, you're the average of, because that's the main, the main thing. You look at those six people that are closest to you, you're the average of those six. Um, we don't, we, we celebrate, we applaud what they're doing well, but we will certainly be the ones to tell them if they're doing something wrong. Mm. That's where your trust has to lie. You have to be okay yes. to accept that maybe I should change a little bit about either my character, my personality, or maybe I shouldn't have said that, or maybe I shouldn't have hired that employee, or mm -hmm. you know, whatever it might be, you have to be open to that from your close circle of friends as well. Mm -hmm. And that those are habits that we we do. We have a constant chat um, on via text. We we pray together. We go to church together. We do a lot of things. And these are, I'm talking about my siblings in in we all have similar levels of success all completely different industries but we're all high six figures some seven and we all have a very high level of success especially within the black community so yeah. what do we do yeah. when we take that and we then we spread it across our community we mm. we take it we culminate it we kind of fix it a little bit and say, okay, how can we take what we've learned, what we've done and grow and um, uh, take what we do, what we're doing and take it to our own community here in Phoenix, here in, the, you know, within the nation or the markets that we represent. And then with that, with focus on outside of ourselves, we actually you've just opened the doors to success. Things just start pouring in. People are like, I like what you're doing. I want to be a part. I like what you're yes. doing. I'm going to do this. And that's yes. kind of what it is when you mentioned um, with Zig Ziglar that, that when you continue to help others, people are going to want to help you just yes. based on character. And yes. your habits are attributed to that character. So, mm -hmm. Margo, just like your, your schedule that you set when you wake up at 4.30 and you have devotional until 7, that's a very long time. My gosh, I wish I could put that in my calendar. <laughs> However, I make sure we... we when I say we pray together, it's a daily thing. Just yeah. that, that five acts that we pray together, it's five minutes. And then we put in our text, amen, amen, amen. Everybody's saying amen. And so that's the main thing that people have to understand. It's those, sim those small things every single day. And yeah. just like you mentioned, Bill, those small things. And that carried us through from being a low to moderate income family. And I, I always have to go back to my family because that's really where my yeah. testimony lies mm -hmm. is – from a, from a, with like not even $25 in the bank account, um, from, from San Bernardino, California, my dad drove us out here with a half a pizza and a U-Haul, um, mm. and a brown, pa a wood paneled station wagon to everyone owning a, 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 a very successful business in different industries and, and trying to replicate and duplicate what our parents taught us and taking it across the, the nation and the footprints that we represent. Yeah. So when, when I say that, th these are things to continue having. It's 35 years of those habits that got me to where I'm at. I opened a business, yes, last year. And yes, it's doing fantastic. It's phenomenal. But it's not because of what I did last year. It's right. everything that I right. did That's the it. 35 right. years before that. All the things that we went through, all the, Nugget right the there. We understanding the learning. Right yeah, it's it, and, that, and that's what it is. So people look at me like, oh, how is your business? Like, don't 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 throw shade at me because I'm doing well right now. But you should have been with me, say, 15 years ago when I'm I wasn't yeah. at that place. Yeah. So, 
just, just to understand where people are and what they what they have. I run a half of my business. My husband runs the other half of our business. And it's because I understand communication. I understand business. I teach business. So I should be able to run a business at this point, right? And so I, I, I have to be able to do that. I'm just like, no, let's go. Let's go. Let's go. He's like, oh, really? So if you put one person who only understands one part of the business, right. the business won't be successful. And when no. you start bringing in different pieces and different parts, mm-hmm. and, and that's where success comes from. It's just... Yes. Just d- coming to uh, an agreement and an understanding of you can't do this by yourself. Mm-hmm. And that's where some of those habits start from. Just knowing that you have to share your, your life lessons. You have to share your successes. You have to share, share your failures in order to proceed to the next step. And, and mm-hmm. daily habits will allow you to do that. So good. That was so good, Summer. Your uh, turn, Bill. Your turn. Oh, yeah. I don't know if I can follow that. That was, <laughs> that was, that was outstanding. Uh, thank you, Summer. You know, I, I think I, I just keep banging this drum. It, it's 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 about the it's about the same consistent things done on a regular, ongoing basis. Yeah. And and, and what that is for you might be different than it is for me. Uh, but you got to find what those things are. You got to find the people to, to to be in your inner circle, like Summer was talking about, um, that you trust, that they trust you. You can be authentically you with them, share your joys, share your struggles, encourage one another. Uh, by the way, encouragement, I mean, do you know who needs encouragement? Anyone who's breathing uh, needs encouragement, right? Uh, that, that's from uh, uh, Truett Cathy from, from uh, Chick-fil-A said that. And it's so true. So you need people in your inner circle that encourage you. That can be part of your, your, your daily uh, your daily dose of, of, of goodness is finding other people that you connect with either through text or in person or whatever that encourage you, that, that keep you uh, motivated as well as encouraging yourself. Um, I think it's always about growing. For me, it's always about growing myself. Uh, if I'm growing myself, then I'm prepared for what's ahead of me. Even the unexpected things like, like opportunities that come last minute and you're like, well, am I prepared to do this? Well, I've been preparing for, for a long time to do whatever the next is that the next door that opens. And um, I think that's why some people um, are always waiting for that big break. And when the big break comes, are you going to be ready? You, you're, you need to prepare yourself now for what's coming. And um, so those daily things, it's, it's, it's things like my attitude. It's, it's my attitude about things. It's prioritizing my priorities. So that's, you know, that's, that's my, that's my reading. That's my uh, quiet time. Um, it, sometimes we think high performance means I'm always in high octane mode. Absolutely. And, not. and I would also say high performance habit. This is going to sound counterintuitive. It also includes rest. It also includes rest. We, we were designed. If, if God created the earth in six days and rested, if God needed to rest, he was setting the model that we need to rest, that our bodies need sleep at night. Our bodies need, need times of not constantly on the go, but say, okay, I'm going to rest. I'm going to, I am going to, I am going to get comfortable and enjoy a movie or go for a walk or do something that re- 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 regenerates my thinking and, and, uh, and, and, and make that part of our priority. Um, and, and, and so many things like that. I, I guess I could go on and on, but just to say um, that, that if we come up with the daily things that we want to put in practice in our life and start to do them daily, it makes all the difference. One other thing I would add um, is, is for me, a habit is I the night before I prepare for the next day. That to me is a new ha- a habit that I've implemented. I, I make my little list. What do I, I have my calendar. I know what's on the calendar. But I make a little list. Okay, I need to send this email. I need to follow up with this person. I need to make sure I do this tomorrow. So that when I get up the next day, yes, I'm doing my daily things that I do in the morning. And I, I like you, Margo, I'm an early morning person as well. So um, I, like the, I like the quietness of the morning. But then I know what my list is. I know what my to-do list is, the things that I'm going to accomplish. Um, I learned this other thing. and This is the last thing I'll add here. Uh, for 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 um, growing is um, uh, a business mentor of mine, Jeff Henderson, uh, shared that if you if you start each new month and you decide uh, as you start the new month for the first ten days of that month, I'm going to do something new, and you make that a daily practice. 
Guess what happens at the end of a year? You've done 12 new things you've never done before yeah. consistently, and it might even become a part of your daily ongoing life. So for me, uh, beginning of September, I was like, I, I, I am working out, but I need to work on my uh, flexibility. I need to work on stretching. So I downloaded a stretching app. And so for the first 10 days of September, I implemented in my workouts, I added stretching. Well, guess what? Now we're in November and I'm still doing those stretches that I started back in September. Yeah. So that can be a practical thing for us too. If you want to grow, if you want to add new habits, okay, December's coming. What thing do you want to add in the month? Maybe, maybe you're not a reader, but you say, you know what, I'm going to read. I can read something for 10 days yeah. or, or maybe, or maybe, uh, you know, maybe you need to go for walks. So I'm going to go for walks 10 days in a row, the first 10 days of the month and see what happens in your life and see what you look forward to the beginning of the next month to implement something for 10 days at the beginning of the next month. You may just find a new habit that is transformational and beneficial in your life. Again, as we're talking about this, Bill, like that was so good. Summer, your points to, you know, normalizing talking about success is what I took away from Summer. Um, be open to receive constructive feedback, Summer, is what I took away as well. Um, and then for you too, Bill, like when you're talking, you know, when you grow, you are making a room to learn new things. And so that I'll, you know, I'll add to that as one thing is being willing, be willing to unlearn. That's, that's the first part of that. And then the second part of this is also be willing to learn new things about yeah. what you think, you know, mm -hmm. I say it this way. We have to learn, we have to unlearn and we have to relearn. Relearn. Yeah. So many things. That's, that's that progression there that you're just talking about. Exactly. So true in our life. We, exactly. we'll get stuck if we think oh, i already know that i already know that and, and we need to be able to re to unlearn and relearn and that then that's exactly it and again when i say i've slowed down um i used to talk a hundred thousand miles a minute as well but so it was i was i really felt that i had to get somewhere faster than i needed to and and so i, I want to bring this point up and then connect it back to the schedule for a moment um i i Sometime in October, I, I ended up going to residency for the doctoral program. And what we realized was that was the first time I'd been alone in two years. Mm -hmm. And that was something that I remember earlier in the year I had written, I, I, wrote, I wrote, I said, I want to be able to take a, a, a staycation four times a year and just reset and no, nobody, no kids, nothing. And just, just me and see what that does. And it happened to come um, just at a time where we, my husband and I had participated in a seven day fast. And then I took that time to just be present. And I want to share this um, because you mentioned rest. You mentioned the, you, we can call it peace, solitude, or what have you. And, you know, some of you were like, it's 4.30 to 7.00. Yes. And that is mama time. And I am not disrupted. And I do that every day. How? I don't know, but it's worked so far and we're going to write it out until it doesn't work anymore. But I really want to stress this because the things that I was able to do that week where I took off, uh, well, not took off, I was at residency, but nonetheless, that time where I, I, I didn't have extra things to do, I was able to really see this next season that I'm moving into with sh complete clarity that I hadn't been able to do because I was all on to the next project and on to the next boot camp and on to the next client and on to the next thing. And it was loud and clear what the instructions were. And I decided to be obedient and say yes to that. And so I want to talk a little bit about the schedule um, piece of things. And, and, and as we're coming to a close in the discussion, I'm super intentional about the schedule because I wasn't. I was always on. I was always available. And I was always the yes woman to the detriment of myself. And that led to a lot of the burnout. And so the the weekly schedule on Mondays, I, I don't do anything outside of it being a professional development day. I am learning, I am studying, I read probably three to eh, 
th I, I could say five, but three to 10 articles about my industry. And that's leadership development, that's faith, that's strategic partnerships or alliances or ecosystems, whatever you want to call it. And, and that's what I do that day. I don't take business calls. I don't take business meetings. That is all I do on Mondays. And that helps me set the day. All of the um, alarms that I have set in my phone, yes, even ones that tell me when to eat. Um, but those things don't go off on Mondays. They go off Tuesday through Saturday. Sunday is another day that I do not work. I, I, I just, I don't. And I've had to carve that out for me. Now I want to take some time to talk about that Tuesday schedule through that Saturday schedule to really drive what we're talking about, about high performance and resting and, and really, again, making, making it clear on how you too can begin to adopt some of these things that we're talking about into your life as well. Um, there's certain days that I will have my business calls, getting to know a new person or somebody in the network. I have designated days for that. I also had, have designated days for, um, for working with clients. And then I also have designated days for events and things of that nature. And when I realized the importance of segmenting my schedule, what does it look like to really set the tone of my day from that 4 30 to 7 30 what does it look like to clock in at eight because i can get things done really early but after three o'clock i'm burnt out so there's no point for me to be clocked in after that time right and so three o'clock that's when i'm off we transition to do life we have certain days of the week where we have family time it's scheduled and we make that happen two days a week it's family time whether it's a walk to the park whether it's playing basketball and me scoring on my kids and my husband whether it's going to a property that we're looking at to to build um uh, uh for for uh, commercial real estate that we have and we're really praying over that property and we're racing on the land because we know what we're building whatever it is that you need to do to to really build the life that you that has been predestined for you Take that time to pull back. Take that time to really do some introspective work where you're doing inventory of where you are right now in this season. And if you are not where you believe you're supposed to be, acknowledge those factors. Number one, are you trying to rush the process? Are you trying to operate at step 10 and that's not where you are? Mm -hmm. Or are there some things that you need to do, habits you need to change to begin progressing forward? And, 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 and as I tie this point up to, I really want to drive it home that you are purposed. Everyone who's listening to this message, even us, we can all raise our hands for this. We are in a season where we are all still trying to figure things out. And you haven't gotten it figured out yet? <laughs> right. And it is okay. And, and I want to free That's somebody. Right. If right. you need to change your mind about a, a, a journey that you've been on, if you've been in entrepreneurship and it's a season where you're being called in, back into corporate, do not feel any type of way. If you have been in corporate for some time and you feel like you are being called into entrepreneurship, jump. If you need to take a sabbatical and just rest and not do anything, well, really check your sources of income to make sure that, that, is, that, that you can do that. But do what you need to do in this season because understand that there are people who mm. are on the other side of your obedience, of your breakthrough, who are waiting for you to become who you have been predestined. Oh, that's so good. Margo, that's so good. People waiting on the other side. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. And so as we land this conversation, I feel like this was so rich. I feel like we unpacked so many really key points. You know, we talked about from a fundamental perspective, what is high, you know, high performance? And then we started poking holes in this, realizing that it's not this, this unrealistic goal setting process that we need to do. It is really coming back and, and putting back the human elements mm -hmm. 
making sure that we're focusing on the person behind the business. Yeah. We, we talked about, um, really understanding mindset. We talked about, we heard about the corporate perspective, not rushing or outpacing the season in which we're in. We talked about even productivity. We talked about reprogramming our habits. We talked about, I had this question here, but we already answered it. So I didn't bring it back up, but the style of support we need from our professional peers or our support system as we develop along our journeys and learn more in order to serve those we've been called to lead. And so as we land the plane, Bill, Summer, can you share just one or two major takeaways from today's discussion? Go ahead, Summer. One or two guys, one or two. Okay. Sorry, again, I told you I was waiting for a UPS package. I thought I heard them. Um, so for the things that I've I've kind of focused on for for what we've discussed is this is an ongoing topic. You yes. should always recalibrate your character to make sure you're matching up to the success or the future you you want to be. Um, and I and and one of the things that two things, two things. One is um, and then this is on the daily personal side. Um, look at your life every single, I say every single quarter. And if you've grown to where you want, great. If you haven't, take another look. Maybe your habits need to shift. Maybe you need to adjust. And then the other thing is a quote that, not even a quote, it's something my dad always said. My dad's a pastor, by the way. And um, every time he talks to people that he sees, and some people start catching on to it, but he always says, hey, how, how's God treating you? And um, they're like, oh, God's treating me well. I'm doing so well. And he's like, how are you treating God? Oh, well, uh, you know, so keep that in your mind because the better you treat God, the better you'll feel. And he can only reciprocate what you give him. So, and he's always going to do better than you. So you can't out give God, you can't outdo God. You can't, you can't out anything God. So if you keep that as your focus and your, your personal thing, just know that your character looks bound. He'll wake you up in the morning. If you need to wake up at 430 and you need to do that, do that. I wake up at 530 to, to do business stuff, but I, there's a certain part of the day where he has me calmly sit down. I mean, I run a hundred miles a minute, but I have to sit down and keep God as a focal point and everything else will Will, will, will blossom to life the way it's supposed to. It might not be the way we want it to, but we'll find out at the end, end of that quarter, take a look, and it should be done the way it's supposed to. But um, yeah, from the, the tidbits that you guys have all given, the, the nuggets, the gold, it's just been an amazing topic, amazing discussion, and hopefully there's been a lot of progress made in the people who are listening. So that's what I, that's what I have to contribute. Thank you so much. That's so Wonderful. good, Summer. Wonderful. Well, uh, yeah, as I'm listening to Summer, I'm trying to think, boy, two things. Um, And I think the first thing I would say is make today count. Um, Today's, this is the only today we're getting. Uh, Yesterday's gone. Tomorrow hasn't come. So each day we can make today count. And whatever that needs to be for you, if it's resting, Mm. the Lord wants to bless the rest of your life. So if it's resting, then do that today. If it's, if it's, uh, if it's working hard and, and getting things done, then, then do that. But make today count. Matter of fact, I just want to say that, that, you know, that's not my words. That's John Maxwell's words, make today count. And I actually, um, I don't sell these books, but I want to give them away. So if you're still with us, I hope you are. I, I, I'm going to give away five copies of this book. Wow. So if, uh, if you're out there and you will email me, It's bill at prioritylivingmn.com. I'll say it again. Uh, If you email me, five people that email me, I will uh, email me your um, name and your mailing address and that you're asking for the Make Today Count book. I'll send you uh, a copy of that for five people. Um, So that would be the first thing I would say, Make Today Count. And then um, number two, I would would say, don't be so hard on yourself. Mm. I think sometimes in the midst of desiring to have, uh, you know, high performance habits, we all fall short. We all have days where we, where we didn't get as much accomplished as we had hoped. T- tomorrow will be another day. 
So uh, don't be so hard on yourself. That's the other thing I would say in the midst of, uh, of, of achieving greatness, getting from here to there, put in practice daily habits. And uh, the days that you, you don't get it all done, it's okay. Give, give it another go the next day and then make that day, make today count. Again, this is so, so good. This conversation has been so rich. And the one takeaway that I will share, I honestly, we didn't even talk about it, but it's a, a, been a regular practice of mine for the last several years is journaling. And I want to give some really powerful tips because some people will just go and write and just spill all of this person did this and this is what happened today. God knows what happened. So when you journal, try and approach it this way. Try journaling throughout your day. Number one. Number two, when you come to the end of your day, the, around 8.30, my alarm goes off and it says journal. When I journal at the end of the day, I, this, is, this is the three points that I follow. I start with gratitude, thanking God for what happened that day even if it didn't go the way I thought it should go or wanted it to go, what was a point or a moment of gratitude? That's first and foremost. Number two, what lessons did you learn that day? We should be learning every day. What lessons did I learn that day? That's what you should be asking yourself. And finally, identify your areas of growth. So journal every day throughout your day. But if you, if you don't get to do that yet, the one thing I want you to do is at the end of your day, start with gratitude, write three to five lessons you've learned, and then identify a few areas of growth. And again, today's discussion has been on developing high performance habits. We are so grateful for Summer for joining us once again, like you always do, carving out time in your 100 mile busy schedule to really be present with us, but contribute and add value to the conversation. This isn't common to be able to sit down with the VP of a national organization and, and really have these type of discussions. So first and foremost, we, we really thank you for being as present as you are. That's the first piece. And Bill, thank you for taking the time and, and joining this discussion to add your insight, to really slow us down, to remind us about putting back the human element as we are developing ourselves. And so um, I am excited, but also sad that we have our final segment of the Comerica Business Sense Bootcamp series happening next month. Mm -hmm. And we may come back and let you know whether we're doing another series, but nonetheless, we just want to continue to remind you to invest into yourself, to show up and be willing to do the work required of you. I'm going to make sure to circle back at the end and, and share where you can connect and how you can connect with Bill Goodwin. Um, we are all on a mission to continue to develop leaders. And so again, as a final point, be willing to do the work required of you. I wanna just open it up real quick if there's any final comments before I have us all sign off. Okay. I don't have anything else to add, but I wanna say thank you to Summer and to Abe for having me today. Uh, thank you very much. Absolutely. Well, everyone, you could have been anywhere else in the world, but you were here with us to learn and grow. So until next time, continue. No, actually, a, a Margo, I'm sorry, I want to interrupt you. I do have one well, more thing. One more please. thing I just thought of. Um, I am actually excited because I did grow up in Arizona. I want to come back and add value to uh, business people and uh, entrepreneurs in uh, in Arizona. So yes. uh, I'm coming uh, January 14th, which is a Friday. Uh, I'm hosting a, a John Maxwell sponsored event called Live to Lead. 
and uh, it'll be in Peoria uh, at the um, uh, Rio Vista Community Center. And maybe we can put this in the chat or in the link to this uh, recording. Um, you just go to my website, which is prioritylivingmn.com, and then it's slash events. It's the events page. Um, I'm in process of getting it up. It's also on my Facebook page. If you find me on Facebook or uh, Priority Living um, Facebook page, but uh, this Live to Lead event is an in-person uh, broadcast with John Maxwell and four other amazing uh, communicators. And uh, you can find out more on the website, but I'd love to have you come and be yes. in the room if you're in the Phoenix area on a Friday, January 14th for our Live to Lead event. It will be a great way to boost you into the new year and add value to you. So bring your whole team. It's a great day to pour into your team as well. So I, I, I wanted to make sure I mentioned that to your viewers as well. Absolutely. Absolutely. And yes, all of that will be there and the replay will be up later today. So again, thank you everyone for joining us. And until next time, continue making an impact. God bless.